Celtic knots are fascinating. Their interwoven intricacies lure us in. Historically, they began to appear around the 7th century AD in the illuminated manuscripts painted by the monks of Ireland and Northumbria. Some say the designs were copied from the Coptic Christians of Egypt and North Africa, but I tend to believe they are truly Celtic. Note that these Celtic patterns are not always actual knots that can be tied. Kind of like a Mobius strip, the cord would have to be cut and magically reconnected in order to make what is easily rendered in drawings and carvings. Some are quite simple, like this trilogy knot. Others are more complex, more captivating, until they culminate in the Celtic cross, frequently rendered in pen and ink, but most notably carved in gravestone. But let's not get hung up on who and why and when folks of long ago made these knot designs. We've got a nifty Celtic knot of our own to tie, one which I derived myself from a long-forgotten illustration. Unlike many of the Celtic knot renderings, this design is easily tied with a piece of real cord. 3 16 sash cord to be exact. No cuts, no magic. I call it two loops and a pass. Check it out. First, Take hold of the cord with both hands, leaving about eight inches of line between them. Next, we twist our right hand counterclockwise to form a small loop, and as it forms, we gently grasp the intersection with our left hand. Now, we want our loop to be about an inch and a half in diameter, so we increase and decrease the size by pushing or pulling with the right hand. Next, we perform the same action again, only this time making sure that the second loop takes its place in front of the first loop. Thus, we have completed our two loops. Granted, some of us are left-handed, but fear not. All you folks need do is twist your left hand clockwise instead of counterclockwise, and grasp the intersection with your right hand instead of the left. Everything else should follow, in the opposite direction, of course. Believe it or not, we're almost done. All we do next is take the loose end of the right side and thread it through our other two loops, like this. Taking up the right end of the cord, we thread it over the outside of the second loop and into the opening. Then we pull the rest of the cord all the way through. Next, we take the same end from behind and thread it through the opening formed by our two loops and pull that all the way through. Lastly, we thread the dangling right end up and over the left side of the second loop into that opening and all the way through. <laughs> Behold, the basic pattern of a true Celtic knot. Well, it does have a certain symmetry, a kind of intricate look, but it's just one strand. It seems sort of bare, crude even, especially with these loose ends dangling. So to make our Celtic knot look more like those complicated knots, be they carved or drawn, we have to do what the Boy and Girl Scouts do to make a Turk's head. We follow the knot pattern with the left loose end weaving it right alongside the original strands. But first, we have to retie the knot so that it comes out with one short tail and one long one, such as we have here. The short tail we will keep on the right and the long active tail on the left. So, to begin our second strand, we take the long tail, we pass it under the short tail, then over the outside loop and into the adjacent opening. When the rest of the cord has been pulled all the way through, we will see that it has arrived right alongside the curving short tail. And here we have it. This is our road map. All we have to do from now on is thread the long tail to follow the path of the adjacent cord. So we poke the end of our long line back through the adjacent opening 
up and over the cord that's running across, then into the next opening whereby we pull the rest of the line all the way through and then readjust the knot so that it maintains its curvy shape. And on we go, threading and pulling and adjusting, keeping our new line close and parallel to the old line. So, we go on to follow this curve here. It goes inside that loop. Okay, following along. Aha. Uh -huh. In here. Back through here. Back into the next opening up and over. Around the bend. Down into the next opening. Pull that through. Up through this opening. Into the next. Around the bend. And here we have it, our two strand knot. Even though we've only gone around this knot a second time, it looks pretty good, doesn't it? But should we want to create a full badge or medallion or whatever you want to call it, just follow the pattern around for a third time and we'll wind up with something that looks like this. Now, I'd say that's a pretty nifty knot. Real nifty even. But we still have these loose ends dangling. Not what we expect from a completed Celtic design. So here's what we do in order to finish off our project. See here where our two ends wind up on either side of the first two strands? Right where we could start a fourth strand around the knot? This is where on the back side we can put a finishing touch to our Celtic badge. Check out these two marks I've made on the two ends where they run by the other strands. That's where we will cut them and glue them into place. So when it's all done and the glue is dried, we won't see the four strands hidden in the back of the knot. Instead, we will see the three going in, three coming out, whereby our Celtic knot will appear to go round and round, an intricate symbol of life flowing on forever and ever.